Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Two brothers sat down for lunch one day. They had a lot of catching up to do. They had kind of drifted apart over the years, not because of any animosity, just because of how inertia kind of works when one goes to one college, another goes to another college, and then they start into their careers, and they're just busy. So they sat down and they talked about their college experiences, their new careers, and of course they went back to some of those old family stories that get told again and again and again and again. Then the older brother asked his younger brother a question. Have you found a church yet? It took me a little while to find a church that teaches what scripture teaches. There, there aren't too many people my age there yet, but it's a good church where they care about the Word of God and they care about me. The younger brother shuffled his feet a little bit and he looked uncomfortable. They had always gone to church as a family, but now for several years he hadn't gone at all. The younger brother said, I don't go to church anymore. I don't believe that stuff anymore. It's just a big pyramid scheme. Jesus gets 12 followers, and they, they go out and they mo make more followers, and then they go out and make more followers. Churches are just there to get more people to come so that they, they, can, they can get more money from those people so that the pastor can pay his bills and boost his ego. The older brother wasn't terribly surprised by this response. He knew his, his younger brother hadn't been to church in quite some time. After a moment the older brother spoke. So you see the church as a pyramid scheme, huh? That's right, the little brother said. Those at the top get rich at the expense of others. The older brother took his place, Matt, flipped it over, took out a pen from his bag, and drew a pyramid on the back of that paper placemat. At the widest part of the placemat, he wrote, church members. Above that, he wrote elders. Above that, he wrote pastor. And at the very top, he wrote Jesus. I agree with you, he said. You agree with me that the church is a pyramid scheme? Why do you go then? The older brother smiled. <laughs> because you're looking at the pyramid the wrong way. He flipped over his paper so that the point was now at the bottom. Jesus was at the bottom. The church members were at the top. Here's how it is. Jesus is at the bottom of the pyramid, he said. Those at the bottom are always the ones who support the ones at the top. God gives all of us material blessings. Jesus serves us as Savior. He gives his life for us. He serves us. And then he calls pastors to serve us. Then elders are appointed to help the pastor in serving us. And then we, having been served and provided for by Jesus, we serve others. Jesus doesn't become enriched by exploiting us. He enriches us by serving us. In today's gospel reading, the disciples seemed to believe that the pyramid was the way it was going to happen. Uh, that, that Jesus was going to be at the top, and he was going to be king, and you want to be close to the top. You want to be close to the king because the closer you are to the top, the more people are underneath you, and the more people are underneath you, the more power you have, the more prestige you have, and the more people you have serving you. James and John, the sons of thunder, come to Jesus, and they say, Teacher, we want you to do whatever we ask of you. Not much humility here, right? I mean, <laughs> you go to the Son of God, hey, uh, I'm just going to tell you what you're going to do. How about that? Um, yeah, maybe not. But in their minds, what have they done? They've, they've put in three years with Jesus. They've been with him. They've been serving him. They've been in the inner circle. They've gained goodwill, and now... Now it's time to cash in their chips. Now it's time to, to go all in and say, okay, I, I sense you're coming close to your glory here. 
we want in on this. We want to be close to the top. Jesus responds simply by asking, what do you want me to do for you? And their response, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. Give us positions of power, Jesus. Put us at the top of the pyramid. Let us be great and so be served by others. <laughs> James and John seem already to have forgotten a lesson Jesus taught his disciples not very long ago. You just have to go back to Mark chapter 9 to find Jesus dealing with his disciples, dealing with the same thing. He had, for the second time, told them about his coming, suffering, death, and resurrection. And then the disciples get into this bickering, this argument about who is the greatest, which one of them is the greatest. And Jesus calls them all together, and he says, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And then he, he goes and illustrates the point. He takes a little child, gets that little child, puts that child in the midst of the disciples, picks the child up in his arms and says, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. You want to be first? Serve the least. Last of all and servant of all. But here now, John and James are there, and they are wanting to be what? First of all, greatest of all. Well, greatest of all other than Jesus. They're okay with Jesus being at the top, as long as they can be right next to him. In their minds, since Jesus was the greatest, he would be served by all, and after all, that's just simply how it works in the world, right? When the king's at the top, those near the king are near the power. They're near all of the perks of the power. Jesus responds to James and John by saying, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I, uh, that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? <laughs> now let me just give you a, a, a little hint here, right? Anytime Jesus says, you, you do not know what you're asking, it's time to maybe back down a little bit. It's time to recognize I'm out over my skis. I don't actually know what I'm doing here, but James and John, they're all in. They say, oh yeah, oh yeah, we know what we're asking. We can do that. Now listen closely to how Jesus responds. The cup that I drink, you will drink. And the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. James and John had no idea what they were asking. Let us be at your right hand and your left hand when you come into your glory. Well, you know who was at his right hand and his left hand when he came into his glory? Criminals on crosses. Because when Jesus comes into his glory, it is when he is on the cross. That's when he comes into his glory because that's what he came to do. That's him fulfilling the very purpose for which he came, saving us. And so on his right hand and on his left, you have those criminals being crucified. You still want those positions at his right hand and left hand, James and John? I don't think so. Now, at some point, the other disciples figure out what's going on. <laughs> Where are James and John? Oh, they're with Jesus. They're trying to get the best spots in the kingdom. And they're not happy about it. There is an absolute argument about what they have done. The other disciples are, are pretty angry. And Jesus, again, calls his disciples to him. And he says, you know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, 
and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus, the Son of God, gave his life as a ransom for our sins. He paid for our sins in full. The great God puts himself at the very bottom to be slave of all, servant of all, giving his life for all. That's the primary reason why he came. The forgiveness of sins is the primary reason Jesus came, and it's actually the to be served by Jesus is the primary reason we come every Sunday, isn't it? In the Lutheran lingo, we call it the divine service. And that goes two ways, right? The divine service, we come, we serve God. We pray, we praise, but primarily, primarily he serves us, right? We come to church and what do we do? We confess that we're sinners. He forgives our sins. We come, we're empty, the Holy Spirit fills us. We come, he speaks to us. We, leave, we, we come and, and we receive, what, bread and wine? But it's not just bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus himself. Jesus comes to us, the Son of God comes to us, and then at the very end, we leave with his blessing. He serves us the whole time. You see, the kingdom of God isn't like other kingdoms. In the kingdom of God, the greatest doesn't sit up top and lord over everybody else and say, okay, I'm at the top, you guys serve me. Instead, the greatest goes to the bottom and serves everybody else. It's exactly what Jesus did. And as a pastor, I'm called to serve you, <laughs> not just to do whatever you would want me to do, but to do what Christ has given me to do to serve you. In the kingdom of God, the pyramid is inverted. Instead of the least being enriched, or instead of the least enriching the greatest, the greatest enriches the least. Instead of the least serving the greatest, the greatest serves the least. Jesus serves us. James and John would learn that lesson. They would be, indeed be be, uh, learn what it is to be great in the kingdom of God. James would become an early church leader. He would be martyred for the faith after serving God's people, give his own life in service of Christ. John would not be martyred. He would be the only of the, of the apostles not to be martyred, but he would continue to serve God's people, being at the very bottom, serving others. Until his, until his death in captivity, uh, in, in imprisonment. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus calls us to follow him. He provides for our needs physically. He provides for our needs spiritually. He protects us. He leads us. He continues to serve us even now. And as we follow him, as he serves us, we learn. We learn to serve others, don't we? And who are you called to serve? It's not that hard to figure out, really. Just take a look around. Your family, your church family, your neighbors, those outside the church. As you have been served by Jesus, he sends you to serve others. At the very end of the service, very end, last thing I say before I go walk into the back, what do I say? Go in peace and what? Serve the Lord. <laughs> because you've already been served, right? Right? You've been served, and so now, having been served, go and serve. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.